Hello friends! For today's video, we're going to be doing another funny one-star reviews. A lot of you know I started this series on my channel years ago, and the idea, as the name implies, is that I find funny one-star reviews for popular books or series. I have an entire playlist if you'd like to see this for other books or series, but for today we're going to be looking at Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hopp. As usual, you don't have to have read the book if you still want to watch this. In fact, I think some people sometimes end up picking up books because of negative reviews, so there's that. I will give you a brief synopsis of the book, that way you have some context for some of these reviews. And also, I know that this series is pretty universally loved, or at the very least Robin Hopp is pretty universally loved here on booktube, so I think there are going to be a lot of people that are going to be a little upset hearing some of these. And then there are a few people that I know for a fact don't love Robin Hobb, and I feel like you will be seen. <laughs> you will feel like these reviews are speaking directly to you. The synopsis, though, for Assassin's Apprentice is that you follow a young boy named Fitz who discovers that he is actually the son of a noble, but his birth was an illegitimate birth. So he is brought to live among other nobles. However, because of his particular amount of status, they know that if he ever wanted to, he could try to lay claim to the throne. And so it's a similar situation of keep your friends close and your enemies closer. They see Fitz as both family, but also a potential enemy. So they have to ensure that he is never granted all that much freedom, that he never has the opportunity to try and rally people around him. So from the time he is a child, despite living in moderate amount of comfort, he is also very restricted and he really can't live life to the fullest or live life for himself. While he is being kept, there is an individual who sort of trains him in the ways of an assassin. It's very much a coming of age story and Fitz is just kind of trying to find some amount of agency in his own life despite the fact that his current circumstances do not allow for that. A lot of people will state that this series is very depressing, that it is a big downer, and there are a lot of things that go on that are involving Fitz's overall mental health and the state that he is in. There's also a couple of forms of magic, some of which is called the skill, some of which is called the wit, but that's really all you need to know for these reviews. Getting to the negative reviews now, typically I like to start with some of the really short and brief reviews, but I'm actually going to start today with a really, really long rant, because this one, it kind of takes the cake for me. They absolutely load this book, and they are determined to make sure that you do not pick it up. So, getting into it, it says, Tired of action in books? Tired of being bogged down with suspense, character development, and even a plot that involves more than one plus one equals two? Then Assassin's Apprentice is the book for you. Journey to the land of stupid, where everyone is in a contest to see who can be the dumbest person alive. In a land where important people are so inept they are named after character traits, kind of makes you wonder what Hans is named after, the safety of the six duchies is at stake when mysterious pirate raiders begin to attack the coast, leaving death and destruction in their wake. Fitz finds himself being orphaned to Prince Verity, who immediately immediately sets to abandoning him to the only man whose parenting skills are akin to that of a drunken bear, Burridge. Watch as Fitz grows into a young man and is trained in the deadly arts of candle making, herbalism, leather working, animal training, boring court politics, and even playing the sea pipes. Watch as this master assassin is openly recognized on the street and uses his unique experience with fishbone removal to save a choking dog in order to avert a civil war. He is not alone, however, as he is aided by Burrich, the king's stable master, a man who could just as easily be replaced by a brick with an angry face on one side and a dumb look on the other without the reader noticing. Other would-be characters include King Shrewd. Don't let the name fool you, as he will lose whatever intelligence he has by the end of the book. Prince Verity, the only rational person in the book, in that he decides that a primarily coastal kingdom that is raided by pirates every year might actually need a navy. But don't worry, he doesn't let all that thinking go to his head, as he allows vague political red tape to settle into indecisiveness that results in him sitting in his room all the time and whining about how unfit he is for the job. Lady Patience. Widow of Prince Chivalry, oh yeah, did I mention he dies without ever making an appearance? Who decides now is the best time in Fitz's life to teach him all the useless things he will need to survive if he were locked in a padded cell. Chade, the master assassin, well he says he is, and that's good enough for me. Prince Regal, channeling token bad guy via Malfoy with a side of drunkenness. This bad guy succeeds in only being slightly less dumb than everyone else as he plans to take the throne with a diabolical plot akin to getting out of a wet paper bag. 
By the end of the book, even you will find yourself yelling, it's regal, to every character. The Fool. Finally, a character with an honest name. Speaking only in riddles, for reasons he doesn't even know, this man befriends Fitz for no other reason than because the book says so. Able to decipher all the questions you yourself will be asking, yet able to do nothing about it, this character will have you scratching your head as to why he is even included. Possessing of magic, uh, maybe, the fool shows up as the ex machina for any inconvenient problem at the capital of Buckkeep. Join Fitz in this ever-expanding world as he may or may not be able to use the skill, a vague ability of telepathy that by book two you still won't know what it does. Also in his arsenal is the wit, the ability to talk to animals that everybody for some reason hates and has Burge beating Fitz for using. Remember those pirate raiders as well? No, you don't, because they are important and everyone seems to be okay with that as well. With all that in mind, just remember that this is just book one of a trilogy, so if you ever find yourself pushing out a long one on the toilet, then this is the book for you. This next review I kind of respect. It says, like many others, this whole series was just painfully dull. I'm reviewing this to tell Amazon to stop telling me that I will like it. This person says, literally burned my books and was violent with rage after reading this series. And my favorite part is that it says, six people found this helpful. This next chunk, it's not necessarily that any of these individual reviews were all that amusing, but it's the fact that one after the next is just really short and brief and to the point. The first one says, one star, what is this mess? And the next one said, boring, boring, so, so boring. And then one star, did not purchase this item. I really, really am quite fond of this one. It says, chores of the intuitive stable boy would be a better title for this book. This next one's kind of sad. So I've mentioned many times that a lot of the times when you get a review on something like Amazon, people will give a negative review, not for the story, but because something was damaged. And then they'll often have pictures of the damaged copies, that sort of thing. But this one is of a different variety, still not about the story, but I felt bad for this person. It says, I love this book and I wanted to share it with my mom not delivered. This next one, the top says, yuck, sharing consciousness with animal as the hero has sex? The author seems to come back over and over to, to the concept of sharing consciousness with a third person or animal as the hero or they are having sex. Yuck, yuck, yuck. So as a reader, you have to crawl through this swamp mud in order to read to the conclusion of the story. Minor complaint, not enough action. This one says, bad. If you are 10 years old or younger, by all means, give this a try. But for anyone else, stay away. After that, we have one that at the top says, read this before purchasing book. I think the star rating system for this book is reversed in the Amazon database. The five star reviews are junk and the one star reviews are right on the mark. Read Poison Blades, which must have been another review. I bought this book because it has a 4.5 stars and the majority of the feedback was a four or a five stars. I read all three books with the hope of finding something redeeming. Oh, what a mistake that was. I looked up synonyms for despair and they perfectly described the life of the main character. Depression, hopelessness, anguished, dashed hopes, dejection, desperation, despondency, discouragement, disheartenment, forlornness, gloom, melancholy, misery, ordeal, pain, sorrow, trial, tribulation, wretchedness. If these are the emotions you wish to experience, then this is the book for you. Next, we have one that says, boring, meandering pace, dot, 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 not fantasy. If you like weak main characters, fits, zero action, no plot twists or character growth, and a storyline that dabbles in many different things but never really goes anywhere, this book is for you. What disturbs me most is the glowing reviews, fantasy as it ought to be written. What about this is fantasy? It's a young boy who has a lot of woe is me internal dialogue living in a random town and can sometimes speak to animals with his mind. That's it. It's all boring day-to-day -day activities for him. Several times the author would branch into something exciting and I thought the story would pick up. Instead, she just randomly stops talking about it and nothing really happens. Disappointing. I am not reading the rest of the series. So that one maybe isn't the funniest or the most creative or anything, but I'm not gonna lie, it's a little accurate. <laughs> there is fan, there are fantasy elements to the story, but the idea that whenever the really interesting stuff happens, you kind of just do something else, I might happen to agree with that. This person feels very similar though to the last person. Their entire review said DNF at 40%. This is not a real fantasy, is it? This one says, ugh. 
Ugh, ugh, ugh. I didn't care for the series at all. The bad guy is so bad. Stomping around, twirling his virtual snidely whiplash mustache, sneering and jeering and literally kicking puppies. And yet the supposed wise mentor in the book keeps insisting mysteriously that there is more to him than meets the eye. Well, guess what? There isn't. He's just as bad as he seems. And that pretty much saves you the trouble of reading the whole book right there. I'm really curious for any of you who are huge fans of Robin Hobb, of Fitz, or of the Farseer trilogy. Were any of these extremely, extremely painful? And then also were any of these maybe a little bit painfully accurate? And then for those of you who really can't stand these, you don't know why everybody is constantly singing the praises of this series or of this world, where were these helpful? Did they make you feel a little bit better knowing that you're not alone? I will say the one about the prince just staring off as he sits in a room, I think in the illustrated editions, there's even an illustration of that. <laughs> there's even an illustration of him just in a room and it's kind of true. So I don't think I, uh, I don't think I feel as strongly in the hatred department as some of these reviewers did. But I do think that some of them perhaps hit the nail on the head. But regardless, let me know if you would like me to do this style of video for any other fantasy books or series or even ones that aren't fantasy. And if you'd like to see more of this style of video, I'll have my playlist linked in the description bar. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.